Hi, my name is Kareem Rashad. Today's topic, we will cover STAD Pro Integrated Foundation Design. We will start in STAD Pro with an above ground electrical substation frame. After running the analysis and designing our steel frame structure, we will proceed to the foundation workflow. Here in the foundation workflow, we will transfer our loads and structural geometry to STAD Foundation Advanced. Once we are in STAD Foundation Advanced, we will review the imported data and generate new load combinations for our foundation design. Next, we will define the foundation pedestal dimensions. After that, we will proceed to create our first foundation design option using spread footings. Next, we will proceed to create our second foundation design option using a combined foundation. And finally, we will review our calculation packages and foundation design drawings, which are automatically created by STAD Foundation Advanced. Okay, in STAD Pro, let's start by just reviewing our structural data, including our loading. And then we're going to run our analysis in STAD Pro and get ready for our foundation design. So in this model, we've created some primary load cases, our dead, ice loads, and other wind loads here as you can see. And we also have some combined loading as well. This load we're going to use and transfer into our foundation program after we run our analysis. So here we'll go to our analysis and design tab and we'll run the analysis that's already set up for our above ground structure. Now that the analysis is run, we can enter into our foundation design solution. So we go here to our foundation design workflow, and this is where we can choose which loading that we're going to transfer into STAD Foundation Advanced. So we're going to choose to include all of our support locations. Here we have two, and include all of our load combinations. So we say include all. Once we say include all, we can then open up our STAD Foundation Advanced program. Now that we are in STAD Foundation Advanced, we can go to our loads and factors and we can review the primary load cases and combinations that came in. So notice for the dead weight, we have a primary load case and this loading type is set to dead. We need to review each of our loading types so that we can correctly combine our loading together. Also, we need to set any combinations from primary to service. So we can do this by choosing the combinations such as load case 8, 9, 10, and 11 and changing those to service loads. So let's go ahead and do that now. Now that we've set up our wind load and all of our other primary load cases in the correct direction with the correct loading type, we can actually generate our load combinations directly from our primary load cases. So here we're going to go to generate load combinations. We'll choose the load combination table that we want. In this case, we're going to choose ASCE 710. And we're going to generate both our service load combinations and our ultimate load combinations. Let's start with our service load combinations. These will generate the combinations and add them to the list there. The 100 series is automatically created. And then we generate our ultimate load cases, which will also be used in our foundation design. Now let's go to our foundation plan. And we're going to add in our pedestal dimensions. So first we need to say that we would like to consider a pedestal for our foundation design. So we include the pedestal from this menu. Then we put in the dimensions of our foundation pedestal, which will be a, a four foot height. And we're going to have it two and a half feet by two and a half feet wide. Square pedestal. After defining our pedestal dimensions, We'll now set up our first job where we, we will create our spread footing job. For our spread footing job, 
we're going to give the job a name spread footing we're going to choose the job type which will be isolated spread footing we're going to choose the code that we want to design our foundation we'll choose ACI 318 14 code and then we're going to include all of the low cases that we want to use to design our foundation for our isolated spread footing job we are going to exclude low cases 1 through 11 those are going to be our primary low cases actually we're going to include low cases 8 10 and 11 which came from our original design which are service load combinations let's include those in our job now we're going to create our job we'll hit this create button and automatically create the isolated spread footing job you'll notice here under the current job list spread footing and under isolated footing we have the option to define parameters let's define some parameters now now that we've created our spread footing job let's go ahead and update our parameters for our concrete reinforcement so for the unit weight of concrete we're going to use 145 pounds per cubic foot and we can put in a minimum and maximum bar spacing so we're going to use 6 inches for the minimum bar spacing 18 inches for the maximum uh, we're going to put in our concrete strength properties, our reinforcement strength properties, our minimum and maximum bar sizes for our top and bottom bars and our pedestal bars. And we can put in a bar size for our tie bars as well. Uh, we can choose to set this information as default. And then we're going to go ahead and save. And then we'll proceed to entering in our cover and soil data so the way this will work here is we simply enter in our data into the table so our you can see our pedestal cover two inches our bottom clear cover three inches so we enter in all of our soil properties and data related to our foundation design and then this will get used in our foundation design when we go to footing geometry we're going to actually choose to calculate the dimensions of the foundation which means it's going to optimize the foundation based on some minimum and maximum values so it's going to actually size the foundation for the thickness it's going to size the foundation for the length and the width um, and it's going to design all of our reinforcement it's also going to do a sliding and overturning check so we're going to set our coefficient of friction and our factors of safety for sliding and overturning and we're also going to choose to consider passive earth pressure once we've defined all of these parameters we can then go ahead and design our foundation once this foundation is designed then we can proceed to designing our next foundation which will be our combined foundation and we will compare our calculation and results for our second foundation design option we're creating a combined foundation so you can see here we're going to assign the support locations to one foundation which is going to be a combined foundation and we're still going to design using the ACI code we're also going to use the same load combinations that we used previously in this case we're creating one strip footing that is connected to the supports one and four now we can proceed to updating our parameters in the same way that we did for our spread footing so we can put in our unit weight of concrete and all of our other information as we did previously uh, we'll update our cover and soil in the same way we'll put in our footing geometry here it's a little bit different because we can have an overhang on each side of our column lines and so we're going to specify that as a fixed overhang and have a minimum dimension of two feet there and we'll set the minimum width to five feet for our foundation as well and then we'll set our values for sliding and overturning and we'll perform our design
Now that we performed our design, we can see that we have a detailed calculation package that we can review. Here this will have drawings that are to scale with all of the detailed information related to the foundation design. All of your dimensions are shown as well as all of your input data. This makes it very easy to check the calculation package and check all the code requirements that you've designed to. This report is very detailed and it's generated automatically based on the parameters that you defined in your foundation design. Um, once this report is generated, you can also review the drawings that are also created for this foundation as well. So let's take a look at some of these drawings here. We're looking at the combined foundation. Uh, we can see all the dimensions laid out on the drawing there and we can take a look at those and this is for the combined foundation we can also take a look at the spread footing calculation package as well and the foundations that were designed for the spread footing so if we take a look here this will be the spread footing for one column line uh, at column line number one and you can see all the dimensions laid out there for each of the details and drawings that are automatically created. Of course you also get the detailed calculation package for your isolated spread, spread footings as well so you can review those directly in your foundation design. And this completes this video. Thank you for watching and we look forward to seeing you again soon. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.